Okay, hi guys. Um, my name's Maria, and I'm really happy and proud to be on the Big Scuba podcast today. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Big Scoop Podcast. My name is Ian and with me is... Hello, my name is Gemma and this is episode 187. Yes, welcome back and welcome to downloading this episode of the Big Scoop Podcast. Uh, So 187 and uh, if you want to know what this podcast is all about, what's it all about? It's all about um, obviously scuba diving. We talk to people all around the world connected to the underwater world and connected to the watery world. So not all the people we've spoken to have been actual scuba divers, but they've had a, a passion about something to do with water. They have. Uh, we should say right from the off, this episode is brought to you by NARC Debt 90. They are beyond technical, did you know? Yes, so thank you to NARC Debt 90. Look them up at wwwnarcdat 90com for all your diving needs. Coming up on this episode, we talk to Maria Munn, who is based down at Swanage. Yes, we first came across Maria. She introduced herself to us when we were on Swanage Pier in 2023. Yeah, uh, so we have a chat with her and uh, well, a bit of a catch up with what we've been up to as well. Um, do you want to start off? Yes, so um, I've been busy on the Norfolk Coastal Path. What have you been doing? I haven't been diving since, uh, when was our last dive? It was actually at Chesil Beach, wasn't it? it? Was, yeah, so, yeah. Um, but Which yeah. we spoke about on the last episode. We did, so I've taken on a bit of a challenge of doing the Norfolk Coastal Path, which runs from Hunstanton to Hopton-on-Sea around the so Norfolk Coast. So this is a self-imposed challenge? It is, yeah, and a chance to see some of the Norfolk coastline, get on the beaches um, and see the, the different kinds of scenery. So I've done first leg Hunstanton to Burnham Deepdale and then yesterday I did Burnham Deepdale to Wells next to sea. Right so uh, have you walked have you walked past like where our, where we usually dive at Weybourne? Not yet right. no so I've um, seen quite a lot of activity on the beaches lots of people walking horse riding um, yeah seen lots of shells so it's been Holcomb. Oh. Holcombe, yes. What's a Holcombe? What's a Holcombe, Jen? It's a naturist beach. (laughs) It's a naturist beach. Yes, I saw some scenery I didn't expect yesterday. Did you participate? No, I didn't. So you 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 went to so you you went to a nudist beach. I passed through a nudist beach. Right. Was you kind of disappointed? (laughs) Did lots of grinning. (laughs) Did you? Nice. (laughs) Was it a bit chilly up there? No, it was a very warm day yesterday, actually. So they were. They're all, yeah, wearing, letting wearing, it. Wearing it all, wearing yeah, all the, with pride. Yeah, hang free and all that. Right, yes. okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> so that was yesterday. So I've now completed 33% of the path. So you might even get you doing one leg, maybe. Uh, yeah. Walking? Yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I was stuck somewhere else then for a minute. <laughs> Welcome. Stop. So that was my bit doing the Norfolk Coast Path, and you've actually been in the water. I have, yeah. So last weekend I up at Stony Cove doing uh, dive, my, dive, dive master duty, even and get my false teeth straight um, for Crystal Seas. I um, was up there all weekend. Had a group of young lads. Um, I think the youngest was twelve. So it's quite a cute little group then. Yeah, yep. yeah. Um, they did really well. Um, the the youngest one didn't make the Sunday. Um, I just didn't think he would. He, he didn't look really look right from the off on Sunday, uh, but hey, you know, there's only twelve, so it can, yeah, he'll come back of, for an, of charm another then. day. Yeah. Um, but the other three, uh, which were about sort of fourteen, fifteen age, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> one of them um, was having lots of fun patting his buddy's air bubbles when when his buddy breathed out. So making entertainment under the water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and doing all sorts of waving, uh, constantly waving, one of them was as well, at me, at anyone who else <laughs> under the water as well. It's quite funny. Um, and it was, yeah, it was a nice bunch, really. Um, yeah. At one stage, it was kind of like herding cats, you know. Well, at least they enjoyed it. That's, you can't... Yeah, everyone left tired and broad smiles and went one of the... One of them said to uh, to Polly, uh, "He's had one of the best days ever." Yeah, well, that's how it should be, isn't you can't it? Come out want smiling. More than that, can you? Yeah. Really? And what were the conditions like? Uh, it was okay. As um, visibility was like three meters to mm-hmm. five. Water temperature still uh, seventeen. I think we got. Um, although 
we didn't really go all that deep, you know. Uh, one of them, you know, you know, as I said, was 12. So yeah. we were on the shelf the whole weekend, really, um, which is, you know, deep enough for youngsters, isn't it? Yeah, just to get them used um, to. In an open water situation, especially when the viz is not that particularly that great. Mm. Uh, but the mums were there um, and they were a great help, uh, you know, doing shore cover and helping with kits and, you know, when um, just sort of changing them and yeah them looking after them that's the main after thing. Them. so that that was yeah. all good really um was it busy no it was uh, quite quiet actually uh, i think i would say three quarters f- full on the saturday and i think on the sunday they only sold about 50 tickets mm, surprising isn't and it so time a lot of the pre-booked spaces hadn't gone um so yeah but i i know there was a big ducksford thing on Oh, there was, yeah. That, that was okay. another thing I did last Sunday. Yeah, yeah, did, yeah, yeah, yeah you went to the Dutch. Was that good? <laughs> yeah, so it was Battle of Britain Day last Sunday, the 15th, wasn't it? Was, it? Yeah, yep. so me, my mum and dad and my brother um, actually went to the air show and saw... Lots of Spitfires. Spitfires, Lancasters, B-17s. It was amazing. Hurricanes. We all forget about the Hurricanes, but the Hurricanes yeah. actually got the biggest number of uh, kills as well. Yeah, um, but it was quite moving seeing 12 Spitfires and four Hurricanes at the yeah, end in the yeah. flag um, formation. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. was good. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, she saw a couple of Spitfires fly over the stone. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, because mm. they all come from... Some of them from different airfields. Yeah. yeah. So that's always... always that was nice, nice to see them. But yeah, go back to the group. Uh it was really good and you know, they'd done really well. Um it's I think we had two two small groups on Saturday. Um and uh, it was nice. It was yeah. a nice weekend. And you saw some of the other Crystal Seas DMs and instructors? Yeah, we did, yeah, saw them and uh so it was always good to catch up with them. Yeah, that's good. And I, th- I think I'm back in a month's time. Um, <clears throat> just get October. really cold you'll be all right <laughs> uh, yeah suffering man flu. yeah and you saw some previous guests yes i did sorry um so uh should shout out to james sue um and his wife emma um so saw them uh, chat and catch up with them put a picture up on social media um they were last on last september weren't they yeah episode 139 when we spoke to them and uh look them up on dive with jimmy.com when we spoke to just him, started a new uh, dive center yeah when when we spoke to him he was in greece wasn't he he was yeah, yeah. and you think the current current climate i should um mention this that you know um in the last at the time of this recording today in the last couple of weeks a big dive center uh, sadly is uh, no more mm. um, <clears throat> and um, you know that's always a uh, shame to hear and I think there was another one um, I can't remember the name of it now that uh, early in the year and um, so in this current climate for people to then go hey you know I love this diving I'm going to start my own dive centre and start training people takes you know yeah, some guts. takes some guts to do yeah you know, it's not an easy thing to do because you've still got bills and all that to pay yeah i think we met him at the go diving show last march this march this year and he was just getting set up wasn't yeah, he so he's been... uh, SS, with ssi and uh i think ssi and bzac um and he's offering um like rebreathers uh test trials um mm. and other I think I've seen him advertise like you know you can go and learn how to dive in bad conditions and night dives and things. It's quite a variety, then. Yeah, which he's doing, doing all yeah. sorts of things, and um, and I'm sure he's got other things going on as well. So, go to his website uh, or their website, I should say, divewithjimmy.com, and um, you know if you're not following them, make sure you're following them on uh, social media because anyone who's setting up business in today's environment in the diving world which we know is tough anyway mm. um should get some support yeah definitely yeah so it's good to see so i think that's yeah probably everything that we've and been up to it, it is we should also make a note that today is also world rivers day it is yeah and in the past we have jumped in a river haven't we to done do some yeah clearing out yeah but yeah. i think um 
yeah with the way the rivers are literally yeah you know, they're pretty, especially at the minute they've been quite high around here of sewage yeah so it's which pr- is not great come on angling water yeah not what we'd recommend so i think um we'll stick to the the beach cleans and litter picks at the, moment, at the yeah, moment i think yeah. until uh, those conditions uh, uh improve um <clears throat> and i've got man flu as you can hear so uh, not in diving not in, in, in for diving no. this weekend no so unfortunately but we've got a few things planned ahead haven't we so hopefully we they'll come yeah. um yeah. into the system yeah, uh, yeah. so that'd be good right maria munn our guest let's talk about her yeah, so Maria is based down in Swanage and she has something called, she's got a website called Ocean Vis- Vision Photography. Um, so her history is she had uh, quite some serious um, accident issues um, yeah. and then kind of found snorkeling and especially photography. Yeah. And from that, she's built um, quite a interesting business. She's become an author of a couple of, or a few books now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's all compact camera um, use. She likes her Olympus TG like we use. Which proves you can take good photos with a reasonable budget. Even a GoPro. And, you know, you, uh, you know some of these uh, underwater photographers, they're amazing, you know. And we've had them on and they take some amazing photos, mm. yeah. But, you know, most, for most of us, one... We ain't got that type of budget, and two, we don't have the time to go on. We're not in great big the water pictures, every day, you know, and we're, and we're not. But it, Maria does prove that with a GoPro, with a reasonable budget, you can get something like the Olympus TG6, like what we've got. Yeah, and the and take some housing, damn good pictures. The phone housing, yeah, 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 that you use on your iPhone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and take some really good pictures yeah. with it as well. Yeah. So we chat to Maria about um, all of that and her journey, and uh, I think you'll find her quite sort of inspirational. And obviously, she's local to the UK, so if you fancy doing some snorkeling or have a little course on a compact camera underwater, she's definitely the lady to contact. She is, yeah. And to turn those photos then into art is pretty good as well. Mm, yeah, yeah. So um, she's got a little uh, studio down in Swanage as well. Yeah. Um, which she operates and she, from. She, we got to know her because she came and said hello to us, didn't she? She did, yeah, on Swanage Pier. We were going to try and do a snorkel with her a couple of weeks ago, but because of the weather, Those we ended up... dastardly east winds. Easterly winds, but in. you never know, there might be a chance um, in maybe the coming month or so. It just depends on our weather. Yeah, you know, so, it does, yeah. Yeah, yeah but we're, we're being struck by easterly winds at the moment which is not good and the weather outlook's not no, great for no. the next week did i mention i've got a cold and you've got a cold yes yeah, so that? it wouldn't be safe to know, dive you know you, you would hardly know and uh, i do keep it quiet you've got that husky voice about um, you <laughs> so yeah well hopefully it's on the way out now but yeah you've not been 100 percent at all no did i mention i've got a cold <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> yes, but all, all serious serious sides and joking aside, I mean, you yeah wouldn't want to be underwater at the moment, would you? It wouldn't do you any good. Um, You've got to think of your ears. I'd like and... to be underwater, but it, it's, it's the coming up it's, it can be the mm, issue. Yes. I don't want a reverse... Um, you always need to be safe block. diving, and <laughs> yeah, diving with a cold is not recommended. Uh, always best to be wanting to be underwater, not be underwater. And not wanting to be. be. No, yeah. no. No. So, anyway. anyway so. Should we get Maria on? Yes, let's get Maria on and uh, listen to her story about um, the underwater world at Swanage Pier. Did I mention I've got a cold? Oh, come on. Right, thank you for downloading this episode of the Big Scoop Podcast. Great. Well, it's very nice to have you, Maria, and uh, thank you for joining us on the Big Scoop Podcast. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Yeah, so we have come across you with our um, sort of insight into Swanage Pier. That's where we met you. You came and Literally introduced yourself. <laughs> yeah, so we were, we were diving Swanage, weren't we, in 2023? Yeah. And uh, you came and introduced yourself to us while we were on our service interval, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it was a lovely day then, wasn't it? It was lovely to see. It was, it was a beautiful sunny day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we had a really great dive. Yeah, that was kind of summer holidays, wasn't it? 2023. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. about August time. Yeah, yeah. So um, people... 
probably may have seen your Instagram uh, pages, but how did you start your life in the underwater world? So it's a really strange story. So I was actually in hospital. <laughs> it's really strange. So I was in hospital on the end of life pathway and there was this story on whale sharks and it was the aquanauts. I don't know if you might have watched it, um, yeah. but anyway, so the aquanauts were traveling and they were satellite tagging whale sharks to do research on them. And I just thought at the time David Attenborough was into tree frogs in Costa Rica. And I just thought, wouldn't it be nice to learn about these creatures? And obviously I wasn't supposed to get out of the hospital. I wasn't even supposed to walk again. And I managed to somehow defy everyone and squiggle out of there as fast as I could. And I just kind of decided that it took me three years to walk again. And I just decided as a treat for myself to you know, to kind of go and find these little spotty fish. So off I set with my little three megapixel Sony Cybershot compact camera at the time. And I was snorkeling and I was too scared to dive because I was, even though I wanted to, I was just scared of being underwater without being at the surface to breathe. So I was just a happy snorkeler for a couple of years, doing lots of DSDs, discover scuba dives to try and get over my fear. And yeah, that was really how it all started. Yeah, well, that's quite a journey. So can you say what put you into hospital, kind of to put you in a position where you thought you might not get out again or might not sure. walk again? Sure, so I was run over, I've been run over twice, so it was the second time I got run over. Wow. Um, so I was in Greece and yeah, I was a holiday rep and it was my first day on the road, so I got hit by a lorry, so 15 fractures. No way. Yeah, flew quite high, yeah end of life pathway that was that really so but clearly not so no <laughs> <laughs> clearly I had a home. destiny to fulfill <laughs> I'm guessing mm. which was which was the ocean because it's just been my passion ever since which is quite incredible because it's like my 30 year anniversary now since my accident this year and I just can't believe that I've just been that passionate about the ocean and conservation and yeah. just following everyone for such a long time now it's quite incredible it feels like yesterday when I started yeah yeah and well, have that's... you always um been interested in art no I never studied photography <laughs> so never studied photography where there were no compact camera courses back then so I remember the Americans laughing at me when I was snorkeling around the blue hole in Belize Right. back in 2002 and they were telling me that if I wanted to kind of be in the ocean I needed to be a scuba diver and if I wanted to take good pictures I needed a proper camera so um, somehow I managed to, to defy that and <laughs> just carried on snorkeling it was very nice well, I was all by myself around the blue hole <laughs> you know, and, listen to them and the coral was pristine it was absolutely wow. magical <laughs> um so yeah and it's really crazy to think where that journey evolved because I never planned to take a good picture I never and I'm very open with everyone who sees me here so I never planned to take a good picture I kind of all my images I just say were happy accidents um I love to shoot with the most smallest kit possible so compact cameras my yeah. phone and my sea life housing is my favorite at the moment um and gopros so yeah um and it's just it's just in, it's just incredible to think that I've just helped so many people across the globe and to just kind of think that yeah that I'm just still love spreading the ocean love and just getting to chat oceans really to everyone yeah, yeah. so after your accident did you travel around the world snorkeling to start with I did because it was what I wanted to do I was volunteering for the shark trust back at the time and I just wanted to kind of inspire kids about the ocean. So that's how the gallery kind of like was born as well. So I just wanted to inspire them about, because I just thought if I could share some personal stories and join conservation organisations, like, you know, working with the Shark Trust, and working with the Shark Research Institute, um, you know, and joining Reef Education, Reef Environmental Education Foundation. So I set up their first ever field station in Latin America back in 2003 now. Um, wow. which was in Mexico and I just always had this dream of just trying to just you know just thinking if I kind of get to learn the stories myself and hopefully that can just that passion can hopefully just create a ripple effect and 
might leave people feeling inspired and just wanting to jump into our seas and explore or learn more and just help the dive industry, you know, and help the conservation organisations. So that's really how it all started. Mm, Just a crazy idea, really. (laughs) Well, crazy ideas are not a bad thing. (laughs) Uh, So the snorkelling continued and taking photos. So did you then try scuba diving and actually do the scuba I did so I kind of did some DSD some discover scuba dive so I did one in Cairns turned out he was my instructor from London funnily enough I didn't know he was there he didn't know I was there and boom it was like don't I know you from somewhere (laughs) it's crazy how small the dive industry is sometimes and then I went to Honduras to follow whale sharks and learn about them over there and then I did another scuba discover scuba dive but I actually got over my fear finally in South Africa which is kind of quite bizarre down in Saguana Bay so that's where I actually got qualified was down there yeah wow that's amazing place to get qualified This episode is brought to you by Narked at 90, the cutting edge pioneers in the world of diving equipment. Meet the founders, John Routley and Brent Hudson, who have logged thousands of mixed gas dives over the past three decades. About 20 years ago, these experienced technical divers combined their passion for diving and engineering skills to create Narked at 90. Whether you're new to diving and ready to take it up a notch, have a fair amount of experience, or are considering a transition into technical diving, we highly recommend Narked at 90. They're ready to advise on the best equipment and setup for your personal and commercial needs. Narked at 90 also has extensive hands-on experience with Shearwater and Ratio dive computers, being the longest serving UK service centre for these brands. They're ready to offer technical support, servicing, repairs and upgrades for all Shearwater and Ratio computers past and present. In addition to Shearwater and Ratio, Narked at 90 stocks and supports many other brands such as Divesoft, JJCCR, Hollis, Revo and Kiss Rebreathers. The diving community is always enthusiastic about Narked at 90 and it's easy to see why. Here are just a few reasons full head servicing for rebreathers from various manufacturers, bespoke cable assemblies, advice on specific fitting requirements, suggestions and guidance for home builds, computer laser cutting and engraving, CNC milling and turning, pressure testing to simulate 400 metre dives. We're thrilled to partner with Narked at 90, a company that has ignited so much passion for diving and has been incredibly supportive and innovative in producing and selling dive equipment. Visit narkedat90.com to see why their renowned name in diving. Stay updated on their insights and offers by following them on social media. Just search for Narked at 90 on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and hit that follow button. (laughs) I was really lucky I bumped into the BBC when I was filming photographing blue whales in California and the guy who was a presenter for the BBC invited me to South Africa and uh, so off I I had no clue where I was going so I was with Mark Addison actually down in uh, Ali Washell and then just progressed up to Sudwana so it's it's just been incredible where my journey's just led me to Yeah. yeah Well, you have, must have so many stories to tell with all your travels as well. Oh, it's just amazing the people that you meet, though, on the journey, like yourselves, right? That you just feel inspired by the people that you just, it just keeps you just inspired. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So with the scuba diving journey, how did that proceed? Did you travel around the world doing scuba? No, I came back to the UK, so I set up. The Reef Environmental Education Foundation's first field station in Mexico. Mm-hmm. That was in 2003 now. And then I left there to come back to the UK. So then I came back in 2004. And then that was when I was asked by Impro Divers to help them with underwater photography trips. And that was where I kind of had this another crazy idea like oh maybe beginners with compact cameras might like to learn (laughs) underwater photography because it was back then people saying you need to spend ten thousand pounds I remember one of the presenters at the dive show saying you need to spend ten thousand pounds to take a picture like this and I was thinking okay might not might not win an award and yes it's 
about 10 times smaller being a Sony Cybershot or Olympus 5050, which I progressed to, and with an Icolite strobe, which I was incredibly proud of because it was just like, I just felt like, yeah, just amazing just for having this strobe, even though I wasn't really very sure of it. But yes, and uh, it was just incredible to think, okay, maybe there might be beginners like me who don't really want to win prizes, but we just love to be able to take nice pictures to show our friends and family and hopefully create interest in the ocean, which can then help other people to want to join the ocean, you know, Mm -hmm. and whether that be a snorkeler or a diver or even just participating on the beach, just helping on a beach clean, then maybe this could help everyone. And that was it, really. That's how that diving side started. It's quite unbelievable when you look back at it, how random it is. (laughs) <laughs> well no it's a, no it's all good so did you actually kind of teach people about or take them through the underwater photography path I did so I started leading trips with emperor divers and I launched the paddy on digital underwater photo speciality so I launched oh. that back in 2006 now and gave talks at the dive shows at London Excel at the time and at Birmingham at the NEC so I kind of regularly gave talks there to help inspire people you know like beginners that they could take great pictures of their compacts and ran courses and yeah la 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 I wrote a book and one book of the year in the dive industry and yeah it was kind of quite I still it all still still seems like a dream because for me it's every day just seems like a new day does that make sense yeah 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 well it's quite a thing designing a course you know for one of the dive agencies as well and you know that's I've I've done the underwater photography course for Paddy and you know it's really really good oh I didn't design the course so Matteo I can't remember his surname now Matteo Muir I think he designed the course so I just kind of ran the first ever course for beginners to learn with compact cameras so Mm. yeah so it was all credit to him it was his course and I just used my course to help you know to help Paddy yeah just run their course so yeah yeah Yeah. well I think for any diver on their new well new diver journey obviously you want to concentrate on your skills and just building up the experience but as soon as you like I know from my experience as soon as you've got a camera in your hands it is a whole new dimension to diving absolutely and it's so important as you would know as well that you know and I remember the first time I had my little camera and I was diving and I can't reiterate it enough and you see it on so many of the forums I've got a new camera what settings do I use and uh, and it is it's so true what you know so many divers say please just concentrate on your buoyancy get comfortable in your equipment yeah. you know do that first get get a solid number of dives under your belt it is so important because you just don't realize the risks that you can run by getting too carried away with those fish that just intrigue you you know and (laughs) you just stay with them forever and before you know it you've run out of air or you've lost your buddy or you've lost the boat you know it's just yeah it's all happened to me (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah, no but technology is an amazing thing and you know the type of you know like you said you can use a sea life housing to put your phone in yeah we've used them haven't we yeah have you oh it's just the best it really is it's just it's just and at the screen because you've got the screen of your phone oh it's just like having a little tv underwater it's just (laughs) (laughs) I just love it compared I mean I love my Olympus TG you know to bits bless it for the creativity it offers but and my GoPro but you know the screen on your phone it's just (laughs) it's good you can take your phone down and use it isn't it you know and I, I I bought one for my daughter and um for Swanage last year so basically she could take some pictures on her phone and um share friends you know without having to do loads of editing and things like that and um so yes yeah, it's, it's worked out quite well it's Isn't just that? brilliant you just mm. pop up don't you from your dive and it's kind of like boom you're ready for social yeah. media you know in fact <laughs> on the dive boat uh at farns last year there was quite a few of us had mm. those uh, yeah. those cases i love them absolutely yeah. love them yeah i took an amazing picture at lundy with I had my Maris fin and you know how the seals love fins and it literally yeah. just had its little like fins wrapped or well, not fins but feet wrapped around it you know and it was just 
it's just such an adorable picture and I just couldn't that was my first ever picture with the phone and it was just like wow you know it's just incredible yeah yeah, yeah and again it makes it so accessible to non-divers as well that they can see that vision of the underwater world it's just a great entry point isn't it because everyone's mm. got a phone and the great thing I know there's dive Volk as well that produce amazing housings as so many of them do Kraken and we fine you know but um the sea life it's just solid with a leak alarm and you know you can add lenses on it for creativity as well so it's great like you said for you know your daughter like Ian like the youngsters as well yeah. that they can yeah, just brilliant. get they don't need to study photography to just take no. good photos and it's just isn't it just a great pastime they can learn about ecology and yeah you know yeah. I, took, I took it down for her and then passed it to her when when she needed when she wanted to take a picture of something Oh, worked quite well, you know, and yeah. uh, yeah, it's, it's good, and it's so nice, you know, when we did dive it last year at Swanage because it was really nice and light. And um, by that stage, she had only just done her open water, mm -hmm. um, so only if you know, a few dives in. Um, and although it was quite a low tide for us when we went, it was kind of perfect, you know, really for her, um, you know, because. There was just so much life underneath mm -hmm. that pier. Um, and that's a cracking place to go dive. Absolutely brilliant. You know, we you know, we we loved it. Excellent. That's what we love to hear. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Swanage Pier is where you're based now, or Swanage. Um, so you've made that kind of your base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been down here for 12 years now. Where yeah. did that go to? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> divers down invited me down here so there you go so that was how I ended up here yeah and uh yeah just haven't looked back haven't escaped really since yeah <laughs> and that's the yeah. dive center on the on the pier divers down exactly yeah but I mean it, I didn't really discover I didn't realize how beautiful Dorset is and just you know with Durdle Door and Lulworth Cove yesterday I was taking a group out snorkeling at Studland and it was just just look just to think that long beach and we just literally were by ourselves at nine in the morning just in the ocean and this guy it was incredible this guy he wasn't even snorkeling he found a seahorse wow. and he, he was just walking in the sea like you do just walking in the sea at Studland and he found a seahorse but he didn't think it was a seahorse he didn't even have any goggles on <laughs> he was literally just walking in the sea and it was that clear he just saw something wiggle and he looked by his feet and he looked again and he said that's a seahorse <laughs> it was just like how insane is that? I went don't tell everyone you know no. just keep it to yourself <laughs> just let Neil know from the seahorse trust you know so that he can record it <laughs> but um yeah keep it a secret <laughs> but, that's right we'll, we'll, we'll keep it a secret here <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know I've let the cat out the bag now. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's amazing. I mean, tell us a bit more about Swanage Pier. What are its sort of plus points? What what can people see, either diving or snorkeling? Oh, so there's just just so much marine life, like Tompot Blennies, Shannies, um, shrimps, there's like um Montague Blennies as well, and the endemic um black faced blenny as well that you can see under the pier cuttlefish pipefish wow. um we had like hundreds of sand eels this weekend and and also like big there's loads of big mullet in at the moment and they were schooling the other night wow. it was just amazing i was just under the pier by myself when the waverly came in and there's just this team of just this school of just mullet just flew out of nowhere and just came underneath me with all these sand eels on my right and it was just like wow you know this is just incredible I just love schooling fish yeah. um and then yeah so and there's lots of rats of course there I'm trying mm. to think what else that crab there's not so many crabs I don't know maybe they've all gone on a holiday I'm not sure but yeah there's they're all gone to Chroma <laughs> they've certainly gone somewhere <laughs> yeah um but yeah there's just the list is endless and of course it all depends needy branks in the winter it's just yeah there's just so much there and of course you've got all the colors of the sea light bulb sea squirts and the sponges there's like loads of mussels there at the moment the mussels have taken over so yeah mm. yeah and is it a place you can dive all year round or snorkel all year round 
definitely obviously everything changes it just depends on the visibility and we haven't had the best of summers in that sense but the great yeah. thing about Swanage is of course even if the visibility is low you've still got your macro life that's there which is and it's still a great training ground for dive schools to come to because as you know it's like two meter to four meter depth and you know it's it's sheltered it's shallow and you've got all the facilities there as well so all the yeah. facilities of like you know like the coffee bar and the changing rooms and the showers and parking on the pier and it just makes it really nice doesn't it for newbies that are getting into diving mm. and come with the dive school and it's just yeah. lovely because they've just got everything literally just there yeah that is one of the things i that we really enjoy was the fact that uh when we arrived we parked up and you're literally yards from where you get in the air fills and the uh, dive center literally at the end of the pier and you get in just a few yards from where you park and there's nice bars there and stuff for you know get a nice coffee and an um, ice cream afterwards and yes yeah, nice place to go exactly it's perfect you know yeah. i mean i love chesil as well because you just got such a different you know kind of aspect over there but it's always the parking isn't it <laughs> you know um, yeah I think yeah. we were a bit lucky last weekend with the we found we, we got a good car park space we did and, you deserve uh, it I should say thanks to Tom O3 who sent us some directions as well oh bless him they're brilliant know. over there though O3 yeah they really are a great team so yeah yeah so do you take people snorkeling over to Chesil as well um, not yet. So again, because it's just so weather dependent. Mm. So at the moment, I've just kept them over this side. But certainly, you know, it, it, I've just kind of launched Snorkel Dorset for group meetup. So yesterday, I had my first group meetup. Wow. So, yeah. So what that went. I was meetup? snorkeling. It was crazy. I was snorkeling at six thirty in the morning at Swanage Pier, an old yeah. pier. And then I was meeting them at nine o'clock at Studland. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that they loved it so much they wanted to carry on snorkeling so we did so we went back to Swanage oh, wow. <laughs> so yeah like three snorkels a day yeah. yeah and do you find some people who start the snorkeling journey then progress to scuba definitely I had a family that came down from London a couple of weeks ago to visit me and it was really interesting because their children that they're 13 10 and 12 and they all want to be scuba divers. So it was brilliant because in the course, I could use my diving skills and my dive master skills to teach them, you know, signals and incorporate techniques that they can use when they do their open water in the future, which yeah. was, which I really love because, you know, I'm sad that I can't dive anymore, but at least I can do something positive for the dive industry and, yeah. you know, kind of help to create hopefully this little tribe of new ambassadors to, you know, kind of, become future divers so that's that's the dream of well, snorkeling is a vital part of diving you know snorkeling it's how a lot of people started you know oh. you know it's, it's, it goes hand in hand same as free diving snorkeling uh you know mo mo lot you know what kids didn't don't start off on the beach having the having the look in rock pools and things like that so snorkeling's vital oh um, it was so funny yesterday. That's exactly where I ended up, was in my first rock pool, like snorkeling. <laughs> and it was just beautiful. It's just crazy how much you can see in like less than half a metre of water. Yeah. You know, it was just like, wow, how did it take me 12 years to find this rock pool? It was just um, beautiful. Yeah. And it's the same with like beach life. I live on the coast, but there are people that have lived here all their years, but don't even go on the beach. And you think, well... Why? Like the beach. <laughs> you, you see so much. Every day is different on the beach. It's not the same any day. It's just, and then, you know, it's exactly the same like seeing starfish on the beach or, you know, the different jellyfish that get washed up. It's just, yeah, incredible what you see. Oh, it really is. I know. And, that, and I think because I lived overseas and I was a blue water diver, I'll be quite, I'm quite transparent with people here as well that. The UK waters always scared me when I was working in the dive industry. I was. I was petrified of green water, thinking it was cold, it was grey. What do you see? And it's really incredible because I just like yesterday morning, even though like I was I was just floating in the water, just watching the sunrise and there wasn't anything else to see. But I was just so mesmerised. It was just my real Zen moment to just yeah. be there by myself and just 
just floating in the ocean, just watching the sunrise yeah. in the UK. There was so much to be said for that. And there, there is so much around our coastline. It's just been amazing to discover. I can't remember who said it. Somebody said it this to us and said, you find your happy place. And it's very true. Mm. I, can't, I can't remember who said that to us. No, I think but it's kind of a theme that runs through quite a lot of people we've spoken to, getting mm. in the water or being being by the water. You don't need to be under the water on it or by it. It is that kind of Out of all the same thing. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And I think as well with the swimmer, pop, with swimmer population, you know, so mm. many people love swimming. And I think that's a great thing for the dive industry, for diving and snorkeling, because they just now want to learn more about what is they're kind of seeing all these yeah. these little creatures you know in their swim goggles and they're wanting to explore now and learn about the creatures more and I just think it's just yeah I just think it's just fabulous yeah, yeah. do you think things changed from pre-covid to now because people were kind of forced to stay in the UK and explore what they had on their doorstep because they couldn't go anywhere yeah, potentially. I don't really know too much about that side, but I'd mm. like to hope that, you know, kind of hopefully, you know, there's a lot of people now that are just waiting to just really wanting to develop their skills more and invest in courses or, you know, trips and stuff. And I mean, especially like I kind of love talking about how swimming with puffins over in Wales was just so incredible you know with Scomer Island just being with a plastic puffin swimming in the sea with this plastic puffin on your head you know so that you could uh, just have a nice close-up experience of this puffin just giving you this really strange How did look you, get a puffin you know get to stay on your head haven't you done it guys no, no. you need to go no, that's a new one Gemma there we go I think you look brilliant with puffins on your head so do I I think she now Gemma's thinking about what ways uh Gemma hasn't made this quite all this well known yet but Gemma's now on for a hundredth dive uh-huh you know, traditionally yes. you're meant to be naked aren't you for your hundredth dive she doesn't want to be naked. So I said, well, well, you've got to find some interesting way to celebrate your first hundred. So maybe this could be it. You've could got to be. have a, a puffin on your head. Yeah. I think it would be way more fun. Yeah, it would. Yeah, it would I be definitely different think as well. It, yeah, it's got to be a probably a sea dive because we've all inland water is what it is. And <laughs> Yeah, you just you you know it's like the chisel dive. You come out and you're on a complete high with what you've seen and you know the experience you've had, and it's just a whole different thing to inland diving. I know inland diving has its place, but there is nothing like coming out smiling, puffing <laughs> on your head. Yeah, with a puffin. You mean to say those gnomes don't make you smile at Stony? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. You've got to remember what they are, you know. They're training and, grounds, aren't they? They are a training ground. And, like, at the moment, the viz is not great. It's like, oh, uh, really? I was diving at the weekend, and it's three metres at times, you know. Um, it's UK diving, isn't it? And, you know, sometimes you'll go there, and that's beautifully clear. And then sometimes you go, and it's really murky. And it's been we've seen it a lot worse than what it is at mm. the minute. And I've seen it a lot better than what it is at the minute. And um it is what it is you know and it's thank goodness we do have our inland training lakes because for people like who do live more in the midlands where would they go exactly and you know like cape and ray i remember seeing the polar bear there in the summer i don't know if the polar bear's still up there but i did love it with its little brolly bless it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean, the all the UK inland centres have done a great job, like Bobster, haven't they? You know, to yeah. like to really put on something special so people can learn all year round. So all credit to them. Yeah, okay. and we, what would we do without them? Because you know, our open water and our advanced, you know, that is generally done. But I think we're now found how Gemma is going to celebrate her hundred. <laughs> with a puffin on my head yeah <laughs> you've given me an idea actually where can we get I'm a plastic trying puffin? to photograph my local ducks so I'm thinking <laughs> how can I get my ducks to come that's... near me and you've actually just inspired me that maybe that's what I have to do there we go. Well, you, with a plastic have, duck on my head you have ducks at Swanage Pier on the sea only if they're lost <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, in, in Wareham <laughs> yeah. Wareham River so yeah 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 
I don't think for here on the East Coast, we've got lots of seagulls, kitty wakes and cormorants. <laughs> That's about it, isn't it? I don't think I'm brave enough to put a seagull kind of like on my head. No. <laughs> no. I might They're get a bit dive I might see a try. <laughs> yeah well maybe that's given other people ideas as well <laughs> watch this space <laughs> yeah how to interact with the wildlife <laughs> there is a guy go to stony actually i've seen with a um with a hood and that's got a nemo got you know the uh yeah. clownfish yeah on it on his head that's yeah that's not a bad idea i'm not too yeah, sure what the is. duck would make of that though it might try and eat it or something so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but with bird life i mean we've dived at the farns and lindy i think we've seen birds underwater yeah mm. and it's just you know when you see it you just can't yeah, believe your eyes things, aren't they seeing birds underwater the ga- are they the them. gannets down there because they yeah. just they dive so fast as well don't they it's just yeah. incredible yeah yeah, but again, it's just a whole new world, isn't it? Seeing stuff underwater and on the water as well and what's around you. And that's the thing. I mean, Lundy is just so special, like the farms again yeah. for interactions, isn't it? It's just beautiful. It's just we're really lucky with our coastline, I think, where you've got blue sharks, of Amazing. course, you know, and yeah, just all and of you've this. You've got uh wrecks down where you have as well. You've got some some uh wrecks that are not all that deep for recreational divers. Yeah, you've got the fleur de lis, of course, and Valentine tanks as well. Yeah. So yeah. there's so much. The Kiara, I had, I'd always wanted to get a piece of pottery from the Kiara, <laughs> but of course I'm always, I'm too, I don't like deep dives. Not thirty meters, not in green water. I just, no, I just couldn't, couldn't do it. But with the easterly wind, the pottery comes to me because it just washes up. I got my first piece last week. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> so yeah, so when I found a fishing rope, it was a fishing rope had been displaced as well. So I was securing that and uh, messaging ghost fishing as well about what do I do. So I was mm. making it safe so vehicle so um, vessels didn't get trapped in it. And uh, I found a piece of pottery just by it. So wow. yeah, so I was kind of really chuffed with my little souvenir. <laughs> yeah, and it just shows diving. It, it's never boring, is it? It's no every every time and it's incredible isn't it when you just think you know surely you must get tired but like yesterday was just incredible because the lady who came snorkeling with me she's a diver so it was incredible that she just wanted to go for another snorkel you know because she just wanted to just keep going so that's what we did (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. so your day-to-day business is that photography or snorkeling so it's a mixture of things. So I turn people's pictures into gifts. Um, so, yeah, so I kind of like have my own artwork, but I do writing. I've just launched two books last week, which is quite unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> two oh, books in a week. <laughs> so what sort of subjects do they cover? So one was getting started in underwater photography. So it's showing people it's kind of really the following on from my award winning book, um, Underwater Photography for Compact Camera Users. So it's following on from that but I've recalled it getting started in underwater photography because it includes how you can get started with a GoPro or get started with your phone, because I just think it's so important for people to realise that it doesn't need to just be about the compact camera, you know, so that was one book. So it's kind of going through your settings, accessories, getting creative, giving you tips and ideas. And then the other one is for children. So I've literally gone completely the other way. So it's just a little 24 page book just to help the local children learn oh. what's beneath their sea here in Swanage. And it's just about like Sammy the spider crab goes on a little adventure from Swanage Pier to Monkey Beach to see his bestie. And yeah, <laughs> has a little adventure with all his friends like Charlie the compass jellyfish. So, and Do you do all the artwork for it as well? So I just decided to use my images. So it's like a photography book because I was thinking about artwork and then I thought actually if I just use my photos then the youngsters and the families can use it as a photo ID book. So when they're crabbing they oh, would yeah. recognise the subjects. Mm. So that's, yeah. that's what I've done. That's a really good idea. So where can people purchase the books? Are they on Amazon? They are. They both went on Amazon on Friday. Excellent. Okay. Well, we can put the links into the, the books on the show notes as well. And yeah. then people Aww. click those and, uh, yeah, have Thank a look. You. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> 
And then the other side, is that the course, the photography courses and snorkeling expedition? So, yeah, the snorkeling courses, I can run courses all year round, but of course it's weather dependent, as you know. And then I've just launching like an underwater photography school. So I'd love to be able to help people here learn how they too can take great pictures with compact cameras. And I've got accessories from Backscatter. Um, I've got like flashes, I've got torches from Maris and lighting kits from Maris, just add water yeah. um, that people can come and try, you know, which are brilliant. I love using them with my GoPro. Um, they're just small and compact and light. And then I've got like in on accessories here too for people to look at wide angle lenses, macro lenses for a GoPro. And then I've got a wide range of Maris like snorkeling equipment too and free diving fins. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of got like a a real mix of things that people can look at here. And then I've got the kiddie section, which is where they can learn about recycled plastics, learn what they can find on our beach. So I've got like lots of information from the Marine Conservation Society, the Shark Trust, the Cornish Seal Research Group, um, Project Seagrass. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of like a little, how can I put this guys, like a little underwater direction center to everyone <laughs> in the dive industry across the world, basically. Course information board. Exactly. Yeah. For the underwater, yeah, world. underwater world. And it's brilliant because you get people here like today. I had people talking to me about Belize or, you know, Australia. And it's lovely because they just see my pictures and then they connect with where they've been in the ocean. Mm. And then it reignites their passion. And sometimes they like saying, well, we've given up diving, but we're going to start again now. And it's like and that just puts the biggest smile on my That's face true. because I just think. Yes, I've inspired someone to get back in the ocean who thought that they couldn't do it anymore. And that's just what I am created this centre for, really. See, I never get, and um, I've, well, we sat on a table at a Christmas dinner to um, last, last year, last December, mm. with a load of people. And they said, don't dive in the UK. Cause None of them conditions. did. Really? Them. That's like, you're missing out so much because you don't, even if you say, even if, I, I get it, you don't want to dive, most, some people don't, don't want to dive in the winter but to not dive in the summer and you don't even have to be you know last week what uh, the deepest we got to at chisel beach was what 10 meters and you know we yeah, planned 10 11 it. meters and we were in yeah, semi dries honey was yeah. in a wetsuit so um, no dry suit drama. Water, crystal clear waters easy to get into and you think how much more do you need absolutely and that's the what thing when mean? chess always right it is on fire the amount of life that you can see over there and like you said I mean when I look at yourselves it reminds me of me because my, I've got an 03 semi-dry and I have to say I just use it through the winter I use a fourth element like fleece like um, yeah. an arctic firm layer underneath it yeah and it keeps okay. me it keeps me toasty warm for snorkeling all winter long what that's temperature amazing. Um, well, my my Arctic um, zero firm, so my Arctic firm, I should say. So that yeah. I've been in Alaska in three degrees, and my dry suit flooded, and I was still toasty warm in it. It's really incredible. Wow. But even though it's mm. wet, it still keeps you warm. Yeah. So the sea temperature in Swanage, what kind of temperatures do you get, kind of in January when it's like really Baltic cold? Ooh, now you're asking me, probably. I'm not sure. Probably about seven, I think. Seven yeah. or nine. Probably. I think it was warmer this year. And are you still was... getting in over the over the winter? Yeah, when it's a clear day, when it's kind of, you know, definitely when there's yeah, yeah when it's when there's not an easterly. Yeah. Then, we yeah, know what an I'm... easterly means in Swanage now. <laughs> it just means yeah. there's nothing. <laughs> it's just <laughs> But it's so weird because when there's an easterly here, like you guys know, that means that's a sign to just get over to Chesil. Yeah. You know. So that's the great thing though, isn't it? Is that at least you've got somewhere to go. And then you've got like Newton's Cove that are sheltered, and that's great all year round. I've been going out exploring different coves, like over at Bowley's Cove and newton's cove over weymouth way yeah and they're just beautiful for snorkeling as well you know each place has got it's so different like osmington mills or you know i was in warbarrow bay um it's just incredible really that just each place has just got its own little personality yeah, yeah. and what sort of viz are you getting on really good days when you're Easy. snorkeling i mean yesterday was just crystal clear so easily probably a good 
I'm trying to think, probably a good like six, seven, eight meters. Yeah, that's it amazing. was really lovely. And I know that one of my um Darren, he was saying it was ten meters on Saturday at Swanage Pier. Was, you know, uh, it is just last, last incredible. Yeah, we actually saw some um people that we know from Dive South. We met yeah, them at, Lisa. Yeah, yeah Lisa and lovely. Just, yeah, we met them at Chesil. They were there when we were there and then they were at Swanage this weekend I think mm, and they yeah. posted videos and yeah amazing, amazing. cuttlefish action yeah. yeah 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 Lisa's pictures are incredible so yeah she's a great advocate for the dive industry yeah so, yeah. 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 yeah yeah and it's really good that people you know like yourself and Dive South are posting about UK diving and just the vast amount of life you can see and the, the colours and the light and that's it. And this lady yesterday, she'd been snorkeling overseas and she'd never like snorkeled in the UK before and she didn't want to get in by herself. And that's about, I think that's three ladies, you know, that I've helped this summer when I haven't had much of a chance to get out myself. But um, three ladies that I've helped to get over their fear of, you know, putting their head in the water and having a great time in UK waters and, you know, kind of realising that there's nothing to be scared of and giving yeah. them the enthusiasm to want to go again. So yeah. that just means the world, really, just to see their little faces. And hopefully it just helps, you know, they'll want to go to a dive school, you know, and, yeah, just yeah. progress their skills in the future. And again, it's all education, isn't it, about tides and the weather and the conditions and it's, you know, just people keeping people safe as well. Yeah, and safety is a big thing, isn't it? Definitely. Mm. So, you know, and the tides here, particularly around Old Harry's, you've got to be so careful at Studland because it mm. can just literally change. As you know, you know, you can have a good forecast and then it's like, what's gone wrong? <laughs> but so like you said, when, that's what makes you dive, it as well, you know. So when yeah. you're diving on some of these coves, do you and uh, not diving or snorkeling, um, are you have have you got some kind of surface marker do you have anything like that what me yeah yeah I've got like I've got a huge like um surface marker from Mari so it's literally like a big red like training buoy oh, okay that they would use for free diving so yeah. yeah I use I use that so then everyone knows where I am and it's great because I can pack little things in it as well so all my safety kit I so can you pack in that it out and then how do you then and then what do you more that with a like a a mud anchor type thing i just literally just have it with me because then at least when my students if they get tired or you know if they just want to break they can just grab the handles and just relax on it you know oh, okay but well, not yeah. on it but relax with it and yeah. not have to worry about you know kind of like so is that then attached to you um no but you know i kind of it's literally it's just got handles all the way around it so yeah okay yeah well that's really good having something as a marker I know when we've done Sheringham we've always had like swimming boys attached to us haven't we just say so that we're we're visible in the water I, I just that... always encourage people to just stay close to me so yeah. when I run my courses I tend to run them just for like two people or one family mm. because then I found when I've had different people from you get different skill sets and then particularly with younger kids as well <laughs> it's just you know, they just get in excited and particularly at Swanage yeah. where you've got a lot of boat traffic and of course Swanage Pier. I'm just very conscious that, you know, like vessels and Swanage Pier are very strict and quite rightly so that they want people to keep inside the pier, you yeah. know, for safety reasons. So I always really just tend to take like bespoke small groups. That's what I prefer because then I can give them a better experience as well. I can teach them more. They yeah. can learn about ecology, like learn about sea search and the important work that they're doing um, with the Marine Conservation Society. So and that seems to be what works. So, you know, and then the buoy, I just keep on my outside and they stay on my inside so that I know that they're safe. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. I was um, a dive master in for Crystal Seas at the weekend and we had a group of four lads from about 12 to 15 and uh they're open water and in you know you, you don't want to stifle the enthusiasm because mm. at sometimes there's arms and legs and they're doing this and doing stuff because that's their first time under the water and they're seeing fish and things like that but a couple of times it was like herding cats yeah 
<laughs> but isn't it lovely to see their enthusiasm? Oh, it is. I know, oh, like definitely. last, yeah, yeah, last yeah. year, like at Swanage yeah. Pier, and I had a little nine-year-old, and she was squealing through a snorkel because she'd seen her first fish. And the divers were coming in and going, oh, it's only half a metre of his under the pier. You know, and it's just amazing that you yeah. forget that that first time when you've literally never been in the water before. Yeah. And I had my first ever guest and she was like, that's the first time I've seen a fish that isn't on a plate. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's quite bizarre that you just think, oh, my goodness, yes, it probably is. And you yeah. kind of forget that that's where you started from once upon a time as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my my, uh, my daughter's got a, a thing of waving at every fish. And uh, at the weekend, one of the boys said to us, he said, uh, he said, that's one of the best days he's ever had. And you Love think, it. that's awesome. That is, you know, they've gone home tired from all the, you know, skills that have had to do. And they've got smiles on their face. You can't Excellent. ask so much more than that, can you? Absolutely. That's what it's all about. And they'll yeah. just just share the word won't they and it just like I said it just creates that ripple effect where yeah. other people will just want to come and you know and just hopefully just experience the sea and just want to protect it that's really the dream really yeah, yeah. that's it so what does the future hold for you have you got any plans or more books <laughs> wow <laughs> that's incredible yeah a few more amazing. books in the pipeline I think <laughs> um who knows who knows really so I've just been asked to help um an overseas um organization to be a contributor as a compact camera specialist so I'm really excited about that wow. so we will just see I just you know what guys for me I never wanted to even achieve anything and it's still kind of I still pinch myself to believe that I've won awards and you know whatever um for me it was always just about just talking to people about the sea and just helping to encourage them to want to protect it and yeah you know and the more I achieved in the dive industry the more shy I became and you know and it was never about achieving or winning an award or whatever mm. it was always just about just being the person who you can just chat to and get advice from and hopefully just make someone's day and hopefully just want to want to encourage them that they too can just get into the sea and they don't need any skills you know and they can just like yeah just have the best time and just want to protect our ocean really that's what it was always about well I think you're inspiring people um to do that but who inspires you who's inspiring you at the moment in the, either the dive and or the art world Oh, no one's really in I can't even say that anyone's inspired me on that any, side because I just any photos you've seen you, you think or art you think wow look at that I think Wyland over in America I think for him he definitely inspired me when I lived over in Mexico and Miami so he was a big he had a big impact on me I think mm. yeah just because I think through his artwork he just gets to connect with so many but obviously I'm I'm just me. I'm just very tiny compared to, you know, <laughs> to Wyland, bless him. Um, I can't even say that because I've just, for me as well, I think with my accidents and especially being, and I don't mean to rub it in, but being on the COVID front line and, you know, all of the stuff that we went through on A&E and ICU, for me, it's just, I just, it just helps me. Does that make sense? Mm. It kind of helps me. To, it gives me a bit of purpose and it just takes my mind off all of that stuff um and yeah just kind of hopefully just give something when people walk past and they're like wow you know and it just creates a a talking point and then I can just go out and chat to them and then you know give them leaflets from different organizations and yeah. hopefully like I said just bring a little bit of ocean light to someone's day really yeah and it is true what you say you know the ocean being by the water is you know some kind of therapy for some people isn't it or calmness or just you know an escape as well it's just exactly it's so many things to so many different it people and, I, and also as well you know I, I kind of if I had one wish I would wish that you know that we could focus we could help to encourage more people with disabilities to realize that they can be part of this too mm. you know and find some way to help them to discover the magic that we all can discover does that make sense yeah, it, it does, does. Yeah. yeah and you say magic we've had one of our other guests Phil Short saying you know as a diver he says you've always got to 
dive, you know, when you dive, find the magic in that dive, that individual dive. And, you know, that is so true because even if you just, you know, looking at wet rocks, as we've had another guest say, but yeah. you see a fish, then you'll come up and think, oh, I've seen a fish. And, or the light was amazing, but it is definitely everybody had- finds their own magic. Well said, Phil. That's brilliantly said. <laughs> it is. And Absolutely. Had, had Pet Clark said about transforming, uh, and that was during COVID. And then Christina said uh, and taught us about explore, exploration, uh, conservation. education, and conservation. Mm. How the three go together absolutely yeah absolutely there's so there's just so much isn't there there's so many things that can connect people to just the sea it's just lovely yeah yeah definitely well that's a good good part to end on and before we enter our set questions that we ask everybody (laughs) so our first question is if you could take three people either snorkeling diving they can be from the past the present who would you take and why? <laughs> Three people snorkeling. Three people. <laughs> <laughs> Vito from Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> and why would that be? Because <laughs> <laughs> he's just got so much passion and I just love passionate people. I just think people who have got that, just that natural, just happy in their life, have just got that just ability to just be able to just attract so many more people to the sea you know so yeah Vito needs to get diving <laughs> yeah it's that energy isn't it <laughs> especially seen him on MasterChef recently anyway you don't want to know about that um who would the second person be oh crikey that's that's a really tough one now I'm trying to think well like anyone anyone, like anyone. absolutely anybody it, oh that's a really again? hard one I guess I'd love to take my local councillor just so that I could help them to kind of experience the underwater world because they talk about it. They talk about protecting it, but they've never been in it. What Um, party? What party are they part of? Oh, I I wouldn't either. I don't go. I don't pay attention to any of that, I'm afraid. Well, the principle (laughs) of it, we've had people say they'd take presidents and, you know, people in power because... Some have said they might leave them there. <laughs> Love story. <laughs> but, you know, it is the fact that it, they don't have any perception of the reality of that underwater world. And, you know, when you do have a grip on it or an experience of it, it, it changes your opinion. Exactly. And I just I just think, you know, people, it would just be lovely to just help someone who was in that. Like Steve Batchel is the prime example, isn't it? You know, that he's just really created a ripple a huge ripple of change Mm. because he's just inspiring everyday people across the world that they can get involved with the ocean you know um yeah so my third who would my third person be i can't can't even believe i said veto still (laughs) who would my third person well we've never had him on the podcast before so we always love guests that you know suggest different people (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying Vito. to think, who hey, was my third person? I've really got no idea. That's really has put me on the spot now. I'm trying to think. Um, I'd love to take, I, I mean, I'd just love to take a, just someone who's just been through a really tough time. Just yeah. anyone. If I just met a random stranger on the street, it was just saying, Maria, you know, like I've just been through this really rough time. And I just loved, and I'd say to them, do you like the ocean? I'd just love to take you, you know, and just gift it to them. And just hopefully it would just help them to just take their mind off whatever they're going through and just make them feel better. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't need to be anyone special, anyone. No, any it's age. just a principle, isn't it? It's just... Any age. Yeah. Just someone, just anyone who needs that little ocean medicine, really. Yeah. 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 Great answers. Um, and another question for you. So uh, what gets you out of your comfort zone? What challenges you? What challenges me? I think Mm. what's challenged me this year is coping with a new disability. So, you know, being run over twice, I could kind of like cope with that and I was used to that. But then having an extra disability on top of that, that's really been my struggle this year. So, but then having said that, it's also, particularly this week, 
pushed me out of my comfort zone completely because I just decided, right, okay, I want to do some voluntary work with the Marine Conservation Society to take my mind off it all. Yeah. And I'm really proud of arranged my first beach clean over in Sandbanks for the Great British Beach Clean Week for them. Oh, I don't brilliant. know any of these people. I just posted on social media <laughs> and I've managed to arrange a group and then rescuing that fishing net on Sunday, um, kind of liaising with the Coast Guard to keep people safe and uh, making sure that, you know, I kind of went in and just made it all tidy and popped mm. a surface marker buoy on it and just kind of worked, you know, just by myself at night time to make sure it was safe, you know, for people. Um, yeah, I, I think that's where I'm kind of just trying to kind of, what's the word, just try and hope that people will accept me with my disability now, you know? I think that's the hardest thing when people know me, obviously, like yeah. yourselves in the industry from before and now, but I'm kind of getting used to it and just trying to carry on and, yeah, just hopefully inspire yeah, others yeah. that even if they've got a little stick that needs to be their new bestie, then, you know, <laughs> that yeah. they need for support sometimes, then it's okay, you know, that you yeah. can you can still be accepted as an instructor. Yeah, hopefully. well, it's all a journey, isn't it? And, you know, different paths lead to different places and, you know, things happen. You've just got to embrace the future, haven't you? Oh, thanks for being so positive, Gemma. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. No, no, that's that's how we'd like to be. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so, and our final question: um, if you had a billboard that you could broadcast to the entire world, or even just Swanage, <laughs> what would you put on your billboard? It could be a video, a statement obviously images, but what message would you want to put on that billboard in any form to communicate to the outside world? It would need to be about how we need to really work together. And tr I mean, truly work together, you know, to help protect our oceans, because it's just been, for me, it's just been heartbreaking the last few weeks from seeing, and sorry to be so deep, but, you know, to see, from experiencing different creatures across the world you know like 20 years ago when my journey started properly to kind of to the levels we are today mm -hmm. and to just even see like you know so much life just being taken from our oceans to and entanglements are more common you know and ghost diving and ghost fishing are working so hard to you know to kind of try and get these nets out as quickly as they can um it would just be really some kind of message that would have to be like video because I think that's what captures people's hearts more isn't it yeah to just to just say you know we just need to unite now you know there is no there's no time to wait for tomorrow we need to act now to just help create positive change for our load for our marine life across the world yeah and everyone yeah. can make a difference it, even that one little piece of litter that you walk past on the street you know, that can just make a difference. I was doing underwater litter picks this year, you know, I put it at Scoopy's Corner where all the kids went crabbing and it was ridiculous how much litter was generated from crabbing. Like nine crabbing nets I found, you know, in like yeah. Yeah, literally 15 minutes. So just that everyone can make a difference and it, it needs to start today. Yeah, Brilliant. yeah. And yeah, you're totally right. Every little counts, every little effort makes yeah. all the difference That's makes incredible. a fish smile <laughs> yes yeah. <laughs> I like yeah, that actually yeah <laughs> yeah and it's all about um, education to youngsters as well and like you know doing a book for you know little ones that's huge because you know the education starts and it sticks with them then doesn't it oh I, I, I thought it would be cute to like incorporate Swanage's famous landmarks and then gave all the little creatures names and I asked the actual community as well what their favorite names were beginning with s and c and b and you know so i could incorporate like the community's favorite yeah. names in the book so hopefully Excellent. it kind of like yeah it's just yeah. what's the word it's just a bit more personal than that way yeah no that's really good so if people want to find more about you your photography your art craft side and then your snorkeling where do they where they where are they best to find you I think the best thing is like to just find me on my Ocean Studio website, mm -hmm. um, which is theoceanstudio.co.uk. And then they can kind of see everything I do. And then from there, I've just got links to everything else. I think that's just the, yeah, 
yeah well we'll we'll put that <laughs> the in the show thing. notes and yeah. uh, people can yeah sort of look at that and navigate through and uh yeah if they're just looking for something like snorkeling they can yeah capture that there as well but yeah that sounds really good thanks guys yeah yeah, yeah no, it's been no it's been really good to have you on the podcast and uh, hear about some uk diving yeah <laughs> bless you it is it is amazing i have to say and yeah it's just the colors are just phenomenal aren't they yeah they really are yeah yeah love talking about uk diving bigging it up so uh yeah any opportunity it's always good yeah. oh thanks guys and you guys are just so great you know to bring the positivity to uk diving too it's just fabulous to see your adventures so well done yeah thank no you well thank, thank you. you we try and bring it to kind of all levels so you can cover <laughs> all bases <laughs> so. oh bless excellent <laughs> yeah so thank you for being on the big scooper podcast that was great oh thanks for having me too guys <laughs> great so uh what say thank you to maria for coming on yeah and giving us her time uh she's a busy bee got lots going on and uh first question who's veto who's this veto well i can't by? picture him but i have heard his name he is one of the strictly come dancing dancers that you know, people dance with so, oh, no idea so but anyway, I'm sure he's a he, chef. No, no, he's a dancer, but he was on Master Chef. Oh, celebrity Master Chef, I guess. Oh, right, yeah. Right. So, but she's obviously a fan. Don't watch, don't watch either. Got no idea who it is. <laughs> no, no, I do remember seeing him on Master Chef, but I'm I'm not up to date with that at all. So, no. okay. Well, <laughs> uh, again, another great opportunity to big up UK diving. We yeah, really good. Yeah, and she's a very passionate lady about everything. You know, had the experience of diving and you know progressed to snorkeling as well. So, and good had, weapon. Yeah, but she's got ocean conservation in her heart, which is you know incredible. So, yeah, does it really matter? Really, you know, as long as you're getting in the water and you're having fun, what does it matter whether you're whether snorkeling, you're free diving, swimming? Yeah. you're finding the magic aren't you you know mm. whether you're down at five meters or you're down at 50 meters exactly yeah and you've got that connection with the water and appreciation of what your sometimes, environment... I, get, sometimes I think that gets forgotten mm. well like we said there are people that live on the coast that don't even step foot on the beach let alone in the sea and sometimes you see divers and you think it's really difficult what you're doing and is that are you really enjoying that and do you need all that do you need all that gear do you need all that, that <laughs> weight you know and it feel totally naked if you said just put on a you know, 12 liter tank i don't know i just <laughs> uh, i don't know I'm, I'm kind of sometimes you just gotta go with the i think what is easy and you know, and keep it simple and be happy and come and out smiling. Happy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. and I think it does get lost because you see, you know, seeing the kids this weekend, and they did do well, um, mm -hmm. and you see their enthusiasm, and you, you know, and I, tried, the I said to, I said to one of the the lads, you know, who he, he had a, he, he loved playing with the bubbles. You know, and he was forever doing. He was getting the bubbles to to. He was wearing a dry suit to come up through his arms, and he was getting. He must. He was getting wet. You know, of course he was. And <laughs> and, and was, he was trying to pattern the the air that was coming out of his gloves. But that's all it, an experiment, isn't it? And it's it just is. a new experience. And it's like probably a baby or an. And then every time he turned round, he'd wave at you. Yeah. Woo like that you know and you, you it's hard to then say to some yeah somebody you know about that because you want to see him safe you want to see him you know enjoy the dive and stuff but you don't want to stifle that enthusiasm because you know as they as, di as divers sometimes get older they get into have having all this stuff I think maybe the joy sometimes gets mm. get forgotten about, and it's more about the kit and I don't know, badge wearing rather than 
competing with their enjoying, peers and enjoying what you're actually doing yeah you've got to find the the joy in everything yeah i've got to find the joy and i think that thing that um phil short said to us about finding the magic is a um you know something really simple said but actually is really quite deep yeah yeah uh, very true yeah and again come out of the water smiling whether you're swimming snorkeling diving but you come up with a smile and a sense of, I love that. Yeah. I think it's good to push yourself. And I think it's good to challenge. And I think it's good to try and learn new skills. Like you and I have talked about um, side mount. Mm, yeah. You know? um, and I think at, when we dived at Chisel, I think uh, looking chisel? at chisel? Rick, chisel, chisel, when uh, looking at Richard and Lisa, Yes, dive that with side mount. It does look easier because you just kind of, you know, they take the tanks, they leave them by the water side. You know, they haven't got the BCD and the tank and the mm. ballast. You know, uh, I had what twelve? I had fourteen kilo. Um, then you got a tank and all that. And you've got a lot of kit on, on your back, haven't you? Yes, yeah. Even True. with just a single tank. And I thought, yeah, that does does look better, you know, because. You can then just put your fins on, mm. connect up the tanks, and off you go. Yeah, I guess there's a time and a place for all types of diving, isn't it? And it's a bit oh, like yeah, us yeah. trying rebreather, try dive, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah, it's a whole new experience, and it's probably good. Like for face mask diving, it's good to try it and just see how. Well, you it... and I both really enjoyed that uh, rebreather. Yeah, yeah. Um, try, didn't we? We, yeah, I, it was incredible. Yeah, once you got to grips with it all and how to purge, you know, air through your mask, and it's just like this is wow. the silence is amazing, isn't it? Mm, yeah, yeah, and equally full face mask diving. It's not for everybody, but we've we've done it, and yeah. again, you know, it has its place for everybody, and yeah. yeah, so and literally like snorkeling, even like Maria's very much into diving yeah gives you one dimension but snorkeling gives you that other dimension yeah and, i think yeah. especially for people with either been through some sort of tra trauma or something like that um doesn't have to be diving related but they just had some kind of trauma or, or something in their life where it means that can no longer dive mm. snorkeling is that same thing because you know, it means you can still get in the water with a partner who potentially is diving. Uh, you can both be, you know, in contact with each other, although maybe a little bit apart, but you're still visible to each yeah. other. Yeah, yeah. And you can still see roughly the same things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's workable. Yeah, yeah. And again, it's like free divers. I don't think every free diver is a scuba diver. No, definitely not. And again, yeah. they see an awful lot more in different ways than a scuba diver would be because they're free diving in silence. And the animals animals will behave much differently to them because mm. the sight of bubbles to some animals is uh, defensive mode or attack aggression. Mode. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. So I think there's a, a learning point there for everybody and a point of consideration um, for. Even, you know, if, if divers are blinkered, diving, 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 you know, there is a bigger world out there of the underwater world. And there are yeah. people that gain an awful lot from snorkeling, free diving, wild swimming that, you know, they are, are diver games. I think yeah. it's um, it's good as well for uh, tourists and people who uh, are visiting the UK um, who do like to dive because on mm. the south coast, you can nearly dive all, all year round. Where uh, on a, for us, you know, no. especially this year, it's been a very um, short window. You know, uh, diving is out on our coast. You know, we're now recording uh, mid September. Yeah, 16. 20, uh, 2024. It's been not particularly great summer on our coast. Uh, Winds have been wrong, you know, tires have been wrong. And um, here we are, 
towards the end now of our window and are still not great. No, no, we've got a forecast of northeasterly winds, easterly winds, and that so just doesn't... stirred up for the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, so potentially October, but you're kind of really then pushing it, really. Mm, yeah, but that's UK diving. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, but anyway, that was great to have Maria on the podcast. Finally yeah. got there. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll, um, we forgot to ask her about diving swanage. Well, she did say swanage diving it all year round, didn't she? Yeah, she did. Yeah. She talked about getting in January. Yeah. So Which we I might. Got January. Oh, January. <laughs> in my, my mind, I'm kind of thinking in, in a semi dry. No. In, in <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I love my 03. Th- uh, semi dry 65 if you look for a, a semi dry i tell you those suits are awesome they're great suits i love them they look smart they feel nice yeah they're um, really cool i i cannot say enough good good things about th- those semi dry suits i know there's others out there i've only tried the 03 one and i tell you uh, we like it <laughs> anyone try and have that off me they're in trouble i'm gonna fight you for it because <laughs> I love my 03 uh, semi-dry suit. And, you know, I, but I kind of think 10, 10 degrees in that, and that's kind of where it's at, you know. Yeah. All good to Maria, diving on it. She does, yeah, absolutely. Well, we all feel <laughs> cold differently, don't we? Well, well and snorkeling's a little bit different to diving in a semi-dry, so, yeah. Is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, look O3 up and uh, check out their range of wetsuits and semi-dries and dry suits. Yeah. I we should also say, uh, talking about names in the UK dive, we should also say uh, thanks to our lovely sponsors at NART at 90. They are beyond technical, you know. They are. So look them up at www.nartat90.com. They are the names in UK diving. They are. And they've been, their experience is, yeah huge in the diving world the rebreather world and uh, any questions you've got or need any advice about equipment diving computers definitely look up narked at 90.com yeah very proud to be uh friends and uh supporters of them so they're great yeah so that was the podcast so again we have got 185 episodes in the back catalog to listen to so have a listen tell your friends and if you've got any recommendations for future guests then drop us a dm or if you want to ask us any questions drop us dm we always like to hear from our people so yeah it's great and if you've got any ideas for how Gemma should spend her (laughs) uh, hundredth dive her first century uh, let's have your answers on a postcard to I've got an idea for Gemma at the big scoop <laughs> podcast at lowstuff.com. <laughs> Drop us a DM. We'll be interesting to see, interested to see yeah, your um advice and uh, ideas. Come on, let's have your ideas. Keep them yep. clean though. Yes. Yep. So yeah, and we'll see <laughs> what happens. <laughs> right. So that was it was the big scuba podcast. Thanks for listening. Now that does wrap up today's episode of the Big Scuba podcast. But if you want to hear more from the podcast, make sure you hit that subscribe or follow button depending on what platform you are listening on. That way you will never miss an episode from us. But if you are listening on Apple Podcasts and did enjoy what you heard today, we would really appreciate it if you head to the show page to leave a five-star rating and review. It really does help us. If you do, please take a screenshot of that review and send it to us on Instagram and we'll give you a shout out to say a big thank you. If you have any questions for us or anything that has been mentioned in today's episode, be sure to reach out to us on any of our social media platforms or send us an email. The links are in the show notes. We will get back to you no matter what. If you have made it to this point in the episode, we both want to say a big, big thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on the next episode.